When the Muslim world reacted in fury over the Danish cartoons of Mohammed, this was the face of moderation that European Muslim leaders wanted the world to see. The mainstream Muslims living in this uh, country want to show that we can express our protest in a very legitimate, in a very civil, in a very courteous way. But this is the other face of European Islam. This is footage of the demonstration outside the Danish embassy in London, provided to CBN News by the NIFA Foundation, an anti-terrorism group. What you can't see in this video is that one of the demonstrators is dressed as a suicide bomber. Even moderate British Muslims were outraged that no one was arrested, even though British law forbids incitement to murder. But it follows a pattern of extraordinary and some would say dangerous tolerance of Muslim radicals. These protests threatening bloodshed occurred in 2004, one year before London's 7-7 subway and bus bombings. Now Tony Blair has been warned. Pull your troops out of Afghanistan. Pull your troops out of Iraq. And if you do not pull your troops out, you will get bloodshed on the streets of London. Again, no one was arrested. And moderate Muslims tried to keep the media from publicizing what for them has become a public relations nightmare. Yeah, that's disgusting. I mean, it doesn't serve any purpose. These guys don't represent me. They probably don't represent most Muslims in this country. And they do a disservice not only to, you know, living here in the UK, but they do a major disservice to Muslims. They may not represent the views of most British Muslims, but polls do suggest the Muslim middle is radicalizing. A recent survey shows that 40% of British Muslims want Islamic Sharia law in the United Kingdom. Sharia imposes punishments like amputations and stonings. And in a separate poll, nearly one-third of Muslims agreed with the statement that Western society is decadent and immoral and that Muslims should seek to bring it to an end. Critics say that European political correctness and multiculturalism, which were supposed to embrace Muslim radicals and somehow westernize them, have seriously backfired. And now Western Europe seems paralyzed by the political correctness that grips the government and the media. One of the biggest fears for a lot of commentators, whether they're terrorist commentators or commentators on the Middle East, is if they actually address this whole issue of Islam and start to question it, what they fear is being labeled as an Islamophobe. There is a, a real reluctance to offend the ethnic communities of any sort, let alone the Muslim community. And there seems to be a lack of political will to stop Muslim radicals bent on conquest. The Dutch parliament has tried to strike a blow against radical Islam by voting to ban the burqa and veils. But that exposes unveiled women to being raped by Muslim men as punishment. There is reported to be a growing rape epidemic of unveiled women in Europe. In London, Shadow Homeland Security Director Patrick Mercer of the Conservative Party says Britain remains in denial and thinks it is protected by what he calls pointless legislation. But you have to ask yourself, what is a piece of paper going to do to an Islamist fundamentalist or any other form of fundamentalist terrorist for that matter and it's suicide bombers? Are you going to be able to hold this up in front of them and say, don't blow yourselves up, otherwise we'll, we'll get really cross? In France, the government continues to pretend that Muslim anti-Semitic violence is not a problem, but it couldn't keep tens of thousands of Frenchmen from marching after the brutal murder of a young Jew named Ilan Halimi by French Muslims. Halimi was held for ransom and then tortured to death by Muslim immigrants who phoned his family and recited to them verses from the Koran, as their son screamed in agony. French conservative political writer Guy Millier. A lot of Jews in Europe, and especially in France, are really scared about the future. Uh, I have many Jewish friends, and uh, they say to me, we think we shall have to leave France to go to the United States, to Canada, to Israel, but France will not be our country anymore. It's a similar story all over Europe.
And in the wake of the cartoon protest, a worldwide group of intellectuals recently signed a declaration that states, After having overcome fascism, Nazism, and Stalinism, the world now faces a new global threat, Islamism. It is not a clash of civilizations nor an antagonism of West and East that we are witnessing, but a global struggle that confronts Democrats and theocrats. And Europe's problem with radical Muslims is our problem too. Political correctness has been the fertilizer that has helped Muslim radicalism grow in Britain. Political correctness intimidates the media and law enforcement. But Europe may be forced to choose between political correctness and the survival of its civilization. Dale Hurd, CBN News, London.